Good morning and welcome to this beautiful day our Lord has so wonderfully created and has given us the privilege as well as the permission to enjoy and to share. Truly it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood and I thank God for his blessings all throughout. It's been summertime in the city to be sure just about and I just thank God that we are mindful to be mindful to do those things that will keep us safe and well as we think of others as well. It's just a good day, church. It's just a good day to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I do honor God, my Heavenly Father, and I thank Him for His good and perfect gift. His Son, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. And I thank Him for the indwelling presence and power of His Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, leading us and guiding us in the way that we should go, convincing us and convicting us that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I honor in this address the other Gregory Stephan Messick, pastor of this great church, Antioch, United American Free Will Baptist Church. I honor the officers, members, visitors, supporters, and friends who continue to lift up Jesus in here, here at Antioch, Free Will Baptist Church. My sisters and my brothers in the ministry, I praise God for you and pray your continued strength to stay on the wall for such a time as this. All to whom honor and recognition are due, we honor, we recognize, and we thank God for you, for truly God is great and greatly to be praised. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. As we extend this call to worship, Join in with us as we sing our opening selection, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, Holy. Oh. 
Thank you for giving us the privilege to be taught, to learn, and to share of you. Lord, there are those today who are sick in their bodies. You know all about it, God. There are those who are happy in Jesus. You know all about it, God. There are those who are struggling. There are those who are worshiping and praising you. There are those of us who are in need. There are those of us who are continuing to prepare for, to provide for, to protect. And we say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for the comfort and the strength for those who grieve for the loss of loved ones. Thank you, Father, for the closeness of your presence. Thank you for the gift of their lives that you shared with us. We are the better for it. Thank you for your legacy to us in Jesus Christ. And thank you for our legacy to, to each other through the lives that we live to your glory. Thank you for blessing our city. Bless our leaders, Father God, that they will be strong, they will be sincere, they will be guided to do what is right because it's the right thing to do. Help us as a city, as a state, as a nation, as a world, know that we do better together. We do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, God. And we give you the glory. We're thankful for the talents and the gifts and the abilities you have given to us for your glory. Thank you, Father God, for how you have kept the students of every age throughout this different year in this different school year, Father, but you have allowed them to complete their course for such a time as this. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you for your continued direction and instruction in the things of life that please you, that promotes you in Jesus' name. Thank you for provision, God. Thank you for this privilege. One more time to say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And as we continue in this service, God, we're thankful for the privilege to be in the number one more time. We love you, God. We praise you. We worship you. We love you in Jesus' name. Lead me, guide me along the way. Lord, if you lead me, I cannot stray. Oh, blessed 
who can be shown what it is to do, who are willing to serve faithfully, as we're willing to give them the opportunity, as we have been given opportunity, to God be the glory. We're just so thankful for our AFWBC shout out to the youth, endeavor to persevere, moving on up. Shout out to Jaden, shout out to Jacana, shout out to Marquan, shout out to Odyssey, shout out to Morgan. These are, as it is now, our youth, listen, but we thank God for those who will continue to come forth. Those who continue to pray with and for our youth everywhere. The children are all ours. And we must reach out and extend to them whatever it is that God gives us to prepare them, church. They are the leaders not of tomorrow. They're the church of today, but they are the leaders of tomorrow. And you know, you know, you can remember one person in your life who instilled in you the desire to do the right thing because it was the right thing to do. And you know that one person in particular, because you did not want to, to, to disappoint them in what you said or what you did. And even if there were times when we went astray, they were there to keep us and encourage us to stay on board, not to give up. None of us are perfect. There's only one that's perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. So we are continually, as our sign says in the church, growing. I in Jesus. Not over yet. It is a process. Growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. And so we say to our youth, be mindful of the things that matter to you. Be mindful of the things that master you. Be mindful of the things that control you. God has a plan for you. God has a place for you. And he can use you if you will give him your very best. Your very best includes a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, a sense of discipline, endeavor to persevere, moving on up, preparation for the rest of your life. There was this news commentator, Lord Mercy, what's his name? He always talked about, he always with and now the rest of the story. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. Um, it'll come to me. But he always said, he would give, he would give part of the news, and then he would come back and say, and now, the rest of the story. You have the rest of your life, and God can continue to use you, and continue to go forward for you, with you, because he has so ordained, he has prepared his plan for you, that you be the very best that you can be, not just a, not on the law, and God has great plans for you. God has great things in store for you. That being said and done, congratulations, Jaden. Congratulations, Jacayla. Congratulations, Odyssey. Congratulations, Marquan. Congratulations, Morgan. Congratulations to all of our children. And again, to students of all ages across the education spectrum. Congratulations to you, and God bless you as you continue to endeavor to persevere, moving on up. And so we're gonna do that too. We're just gonna keep on moving, we're gonna keep on rolling along in this service of worship to do the things that God has sent us for us to do this day in the name of Jesus. And it is now, Lord, the time that we come with the message you have given for your people, and we pray that it be received, Lord, as a word from you. We pray that it be teaching that, is, that edifies the soul, that improves our knowledge in terms of who you are and, and your expectation of us, God. I thank you for the privilege you to hear and to, to prepare for it, Lord, and I, and I just thank you for how you will. I'll be thinking these go one way, and you'll turn it around and bring it back another way. You want to be the guy. I thank you. I laugh with joy. My heart is cheerful for how you just make yourself known. I love it, God. I love you, God, for how you will allow me with what you have entrusted to me and the talents and gifts and abilities with which I can praise you and honor you and show you, God, in my life. Thank you for preparing me. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I will be a living sanctuary for you, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is right, making the sorrowing glad. Tell the 
sweet story of Christ and his love. Tell of his power to forgive. Others will trust him if only you prove true every moment you live. Give as what given to you in your need. Love as the master love you. Be to the helpless a helper indeed. Unto your mission be true. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Out of my life. May Jesus shine. Make me a blessing. Holy Ghost and be 
began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, for in we were born. The unity of the Spirit. Our subject for this lesson today is think on these things. Think on these things. Now, I can imagine that if we had you, you know where you are, so by a show of hands, how many of you have a favorite saying? Anybody got a favorite saying? You have a favorite activity? Many of us have favorite recipes. We have favorite outfits. We have favorite life relationships, excuse me, songs, things about life experiences. You know, we might have our favorite fishing hat. I know I have my favorite garden boots. We all have special, specific things to us that nothing and no one else can make us change our mind about why you feel the way that you do. I like my boots. I like my slobber. I like my little hat over to the garden. I like my glove with the paint symbol. on. These kinds of things that are particular to us that we enjoy. Well, why do you think on those things the way that you do? There's a reason for it, church. And as you have, over time, thought on these things, they have proven themselves to meet, hear me, a particular need to satisfy a particular craving, to provide comfort just like you like it. Am I right about it? I would think that I am. Well, the same way we feel about those things in our natural lives and experiences, through the seasons of the year and the special time you associate with them, there are also seasons of the Christian year, if you will. I submit to you, as we learn and grow in grace, and in the knowledge of the Lord, by thinking on the things of the Christian year, we, as believers, relive the life of Jesus Christ. We embrace, if you will, the traditions and celebrations to focus on the influence of Jesus' life on our own. Now, we do understand, as we think of, on these things, some Christian churches celebrate different dates for, for specific events because of different calendars in the past, because of their history as a faith, as a church, as a denomination. Now, my study sources teach me that some churches also emphasize one season more than another if it has meaning to that particular church. Now, I want you to think about this church. By reliving the faith story, if you will, each year. You know, there's Advent, when we prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ, and then we have Lent, leading into Easter, and then Pentecost. Every day is reestablishes, excuse me, reestablishes for us the relevance of us, bringing a new understanding and influence on our lives. We said earlier that students of all ages across the education spectrum have completed a varied season of learning and preparation for the next step of their lives. Continuing growth and development, it goes on and on and on. Well, by the same measure, the seasons and the faith story will make new and different meanings for us next year. There'll be new and different meanings as we grow, as our lives change for the better. There is one celebration with which we are still at every age personally aware of not to forget, that being our birthday. Anybody forget their birthday? Can you forget your own birthday? No, I don't think so. The day each of us was born is a very important day. And if no one else remembers our birthdays, we certainly do. God created us in our mother's womb and made each one of us for a purpose. Birthdays celebrate the day God brought us into this world. So we have 
here with us today. We have we have cakes, we have balloon, oops, and we have gifts. Just a little exercise here for you. I, it's just amazing as I say how when I'm, I'm thinking of going one way with a lesson and God just says, nope, let's go this way. I said, okay, Lord, all well and good. We have a cake. And let me tell you the story about these. I was in Family Dollar Store on uh, 258. And I was at the counter. I saw this little snack pack on the, the shelf across from the counter. And these are Hostess's Snack and Shop. And they are lemon drizzle baby butt cakes. And let me tell you, church, they are mmm, mmm, good. So I said, oh my Lord, that's it, God? And he said, yes, then the Earl, it certainly is. So that is why we have it here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Pentecost was celebrated the fourth Sunday in May. We are thankful that Pentecost, we remember in our teaching, begins 50 days after Easter Sunday. It's when God and Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would come and would that he would be with us. We would no longer have the physical Jesus with us, but his spirit would always be with us when we receive the Holy Ghost. So through our scripture reading for today's lesson, we know that Pentecost is celebrated as the birthday of the Christian church, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now these items, the, 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 the birthday cake, the balloon, and the candles are going to help us show indeed how we can celebrate uh, the things that are around us to, to to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord the Savior Jesus Christ. Finding things that are relevant to church that even a child can understand. Not, not insulting anyone's intelligence. This is just Linda Earl giving to you what God has given to her to give to you. So the birthday item that we share today, first one is the balloons. Now we have the balloons blown up here. You see them here, I guess. Yeah. You can see the balloons that are just here. And the importance in related to the balloons to Pentecost is that Balloons can add a lot to a celebration. But as you can see, there are, you just can't have, you can't just have a balloon, but that doesn't do too much for celebrating. So we know that there needs to be a change. A change needs to be made in this balloon to serve our purpose. A change needs to be made in us to serve God's purpose for which he has created us. Now, these balloons are, this balloon is flat as life, and it needs to be filled. It needs someone to breathe some life into them. And so the Bible teaches us that on the day of Pentecost, the followers of Jesus were all together in one place when suddenly they heard a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house. It filled the whole house. Now, we are here today believing and celebrating the Holy Ghost to fill this space and to bring new life into this church. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came as a rushing, mighty wind, and the people who were entered before were now filled with this Holy Spirit. And if we're not careful today, church, if we don't remain focused and on God, our spirit will become as flat as that balloon. But thank God, the balloons are still filled. Our spirits are still filled because the Holy Spirit is with us as we receive Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Next is the cake. The cake that we have right here. It, 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 any birthday cake is good. <laughs> you know, you have to have a candle in it to say, happy birthday. And, and, and um, the fire that symbolizes life. The fire that was right would symbolize the coming of the Holy Ghost. The candles upon the birthday cake, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost, celebrating the coming, celebrating the infilling with his spirit in Jesus' name. And of course, the Holy Spirit was a gift to us that Jesus had promised us. And so, a gift bag with gifts of a cake, a candle, and balloons. Now this is a gift bag. What is a birthday without gifts? You celebrate your birthday without, you don't have to have gifts, but gifts are, are good. 
On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost gave the early church the gift of forgiveness. You all need the gift of forgiveness. The Holy Ghost gave the church the gift of truth. You all need the gift of truth. And we all need the Holy Ghost gave the gift of new life. And in Jesus Christ, we all have new life. Think on these things. Now, we had the balloons, we had the cake, and we had the candles. We also had a gift bag. I had this gift bag, and I have this gift bag. Which would you like to have? The empty one or the full one? That be so. How you live in church? How are you living? How you going to show? What you going to do in the name of Jesus? We started our lesson today talking about special seasonal activities, personal celebrations, favorite fun times. We agree every one of us has a birthday. The question is to think on, do we have a time in our life that we have experienced a second birth? We're born again of the spirit. Have we heard and believed the message that we must repent of our sins turn away from our sins and turn to Jesus who died for our sins? By believing in Jesus, our sins will be forgiven and we are born again in the spirit. We must be baptized, which is the out symbol showing others, witnessing to them that we have chosen Jesus Christ as our savior. We will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us understand we are born again because even though we are living, we were dead in our sins. Now, we could not have eternal life without being born again. And those who believe that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, was buried, and rose again, are born again on that same day in that hour of the temple. Simple as that. Simple as that. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he was crucified, that he died, that he was buried. And that he rose again on the third day as God promised that he would. Again, not only is it a day of celebrating being born again of the Spirit, it's also the day that our very first church was born. We do understand a church, give me church, a church is not only the building. A church is not only the building, but it is made up of people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Each and every person that believed in Jesus that day. We're part of the very first group of people who heard the good news and talked to them and they believed. Think of these things, church. The new believers gathered together regularly to hear the apostles teach about Jesus. Verse 42 of this chapter teaches us that they fellowship, celebrated the Lord's Supper, and prayed together. Can you see the believers serving and helping each other? and pray, praising God together. And as the believers lived a life filled with the Holy Spirit, God continued to save people on a daily basis, causing the church, causing the church to continue to grow. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. God continued. <coughs> One thing, another world, <coughs> and God provides the increase. If you have been saved, does your life look like those of the believers in our scripture reference for today? Think on these things. Do you listen carefully to the pastor, the preacher, as he or she teaches God's word, God's word, not their word, but God's word? Do you spend time alone reading your Bible each day? Do you pray daily? Are you spending time with other believers so you can encourage them and be encouraged by them to live for Jesus? Are you sharing the good news so others can be saved and add to the family of God? In my heart of hearts, I believe that we are all grateful for every birthday. I also believe that we, as born again believers, are eternally grateful for the birthday of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, you can, Lord, mm, this is a whole other sermon. As the Spirit enabled them. It's not about trying to impress anybody, church. It's not about trying to impress anybody with the gift God has given to you. Jesus knows who you see about what he is to do. 
Thank God for the enabling of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, for the celebration of another birthday of the church, Pentecost. And may we, at every age, continue to be filled with and bring new life into the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we, at every age, pray daily to receive and be the light and fire with the power to do things which will bring glory to God. To bring glory to God, Lord have mercy. And may we, at every age, continually, gratefully, be open and receptive of the gifts of the Holy Ghost as He leads us to truth, as He forgives us, and as He gives us a better way to live. Oh my goodness, church, what a celebration! Happy birthday, church! Happy birthday, church! Happy birthday, church! Thank you, God, for Pentecost. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for everlasting life. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday, church. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending the Holy Ghost. Help us to remember that the Holy Ghost, your Holy Spirit, still fills the church with power today just as he did on the day of Pentecost. He lives. He lives. He lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread.
pays for my sins and provides me with the gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive that gift and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, if you believe what you're asking Jesus to do for you from the very moment that you sincerely commit yourself to him, it is done. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it is done. Think on these things. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. The day of Pentecost, the birthday of the Christian church, gives that privilege, affords that opportunity to whosoever will come seeking the Lord while he may be found. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday to those who may be, 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 is, um, to those who may be celebrating a birthday in the natural. Happy birthday. For those in the past, those who are yet coming, happy birthday. And we thank God for our gifts, a little cake, the balloon, and the candle that we have here today and that we share in Jesus. Remember, we don't have to stay flat like this balloon. We ask for the Holy Spirit to fill us that we can be laborers together in Jesus' name. I want to take a point of personal privilege at this time and say thank you to those of you who are showing love still for our family as we have um, as we have uh, as we are learning to live without the physical presence of my brother Larry. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers. And I, may, I encourage you to appreciate the time God gives us to each other. We are gifts to each other. Larry was a gift alone from God. And I'm thankful he gave him to us. I'm thankful for you. And you know who you are who are dear and near to me. I thank God for you and for the time that God is giving us to each other. And yet, in this loneliness of missing the physical presence, we know that Jesus is with us still. And the very, there's a very precious, precious friend. I pray she's listening this morning with such a comfort. She always sends encouragement through the mail. And I always like to share a word of comfort and encouragement as we close out our, our service of worship. And I want to close it out with what she sent me today. It's entitled, In Loving Memory. And it says, When Tomorrow Starts Without Me. By David M. Romano. When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not there to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today, or think of the many things you didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you. And each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I would have to leave behind all those I dearly loved. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home that God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne. He said, this is eternity and all I promised you. Today your life on earth is past, but here it starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same way, there's no longing for the past. And now at last you're free. So you won't come and take, so won't you come and take my hand and share your life with me? So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. But every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. To God be the glory. These are tears of joy. 
Here's an A. These are tears of joy. Because I believe and I know he's with the Lord and I thank God. I thank God and I thank God. As we prepare to leave the service of worship but never from the presence of the Lord, again I say, appreciate the time God gives us to each other. It's precious. It's precious. Let that stuff that you can't do about, nothing about, there's nothing you can change about the past except your attitude towards it. And if you keep holding on to stuff from the past and it tears the family apart considerably, you make peace with your own personal truths and allow God to love you. Let Jesus fix it. Let the Holy Ghost fix it. Truly give it to Jesus and live and stop just existing, but live to the glory of God. I love you, Antioch. I thank God for you. I thank God for these two young men who are so faithful. That's not taking anything away from anybody else with, but these two are here every every Sunday. That there's there's church in this church. They're here. Understand it doesn't take anything away from anybody. But I'm saying to them, thank you. While they can hear me say thank you. While you can hear me say thank you. In Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We praise you. Thank you for continuing growth and development. Thank you, Father God, for calming the stormy seas and speaking peace to us when the bill was rolled. We receive it in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of God go with you, be with you, comfort you, and be with you until we shall meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace and encourage someone to do the same.